Winning games is a way of life. We work and we dig. Basewinner.com to help achieve and go big. All right, guys, you got the base winner here. I'm really pumped up today. I've been taking a hard look at a particular stat over the last three or four weeks and really got into depth with it uh, over the last week, probably like 30 regression studies in this particular uh, Excel worksheet that I've been working with over the last week. I'm gonna tell you what the stat is. It's simply bases on balls divided by strikeouts. And you're gonna be like, come on, base winner, what are you, back in 1970? And in a way, there's some relevance to that. I'll get into that in the video in, in just a second. But come on, base winner, don't you know we've got stat cast data, launch angle, velocity off bat, pitch spin rate. I mean, all this granular data, and you're talking about walks divided by strikeouts. Uh, when I get into this data, you're gonna be like, Come on, base. Wow, base winner. I wish you would have done that earlier. But we have, and we've, we've, we've played around with walks and strikeouts and, and its correlation in crunch over the years. But this has been enlightening research for me. And probably not this excited about anything in baseball since maybe I discovered base runs in 2008. So I hope you guys are excited about it as me after I show you the data. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So why don't you come along and join me? Okay, guys, let's take a look at the BB divided by K base winner data study. Going to keep things at a pretty high level in this video. Um, as, as Jerry Reed would say in, in Smokey and the Bandit, we, we got a long way to go and a short time to get there. So uh, going to cover these concepts. The good news for you guys is base winner crunch is coming back. Going to start doing that next week. And I, I'm thinking I can do about three or four of those per day. So that's going to be a longer form. Uh, and it's going to be audio only on iTunes or your podcast provider. So let's take a little, let's talk about this real fast and then I'm going to drill down into each one. But these are the five points to me that I thought were, were important. So BB divided by K, it's historically relevant. It's simple. It's easy to find. It's easy to work with. And it correlates with the more granular plate discipline stats. So like you're outside the strike zone, swing rate, um, swinging strike percentage. So other stats that are harder to find. And I'll get into that uh, that correlation and, and, and kind of develop that a little bit more as I get into that slide. It also correlates really well with runs per game and run differential. Super important in handicapping. You're trying to figure out who's going to score more runs than the next guy, than the next team. Uh, it also shows plus minus results in pockets. Now I put this down because I thought it was like top of the list, bottom of the list type thing. But when I read it, I was like, oh, like money in your pockets. So it's got do it's got base winner humor. It's got, du it's got dual meaning. And I think that when you, when you take a look at this, and after I've spent probably the la uh, over the last three weeks, probably like 50, 60 hours looking at this stat, doing regression studies, I think it can be a really powerful stat for MLB handicapping. So let's take a look at the first, the first one. Um, and I'm going to talk a little bit about Ted Williams. Okay, let's talk a little bit about Ted Williams and the science of hitting. I think this is the best book of all time. Of course, I'm a baseball handicapper, so I'm biased. But Ted Williams, the best hitter of all time, in his book, Science of Hitting, says the most important thing, rule number one, get a good ball to hit. And he, his thought was that a good hitter can hit a pitch that is over the plate three times better than a great hitter with a questionable ball, questionable ball in a tough spot. And this gave me the inspiration for this particular study. And that's why I kind of dug into it. If you look at Ted Williams, his... His BB divided by K never went below one. And you'll see some of the, the players, like I think Bellinger's at a one right now. He's the best, or right around the best in, in baseball. But pretty amazing hitter, and, and, and that's why I had great plate discipline. And so this BB divided by K goes back to that plate discipline. It's a really simple stat, and, and I wanted to include this because sometimes we get really – I don't know, we make things too complex for us. And I think that this BB divided by K is a very simple stat. It's something you can understand. It's something that I can understand. And it's, it, you can, you, more importantly, be able to use this stat in a, a variety of different situations. So anyway, simplicity, the ultimate sophistication. And that is by Leonardo da Vinci. I mean, I tell you what, Renaissance man, you guys, you know, He's talking about BB to B to B divided by K. Well, not really, but I, I'm kind of tying it in. And so, and Einstein said everything should be made simple as po made as simple as possible, but not simpler. And so, you got to keep that in mind too, because then you could you could take the simple and make it a little bit more complex. But that's that's for another day. So, okay, so let's talk about correlation coefficient because we're, we're going to talk about 
why this BV divided by K is good. So just kind of reiterating this, I've talked about this in, a, in other videos, but the correlation coefficient is indicated by R, okay? R ranges from minus 1.00 to 1.00, and the value indicates the strength of the relationship. So, and I've said this before, the closer to zero, the weaker the relationship, the closer to 1.00, the stronger the relationship, and then the sign indicates whether it's a positive or negative correlation. So just to kind of give you, uh, somebody talking about 0.6 correlation or 0 0.8 Rs, and so just so you, you guys kind of know, you can review this. A 0 0.8 to 0.90 correlation, very strong. And we're going to be talking about most of the, the studies are in this, this R range of 0.8 to 0.9, very strong, and 0.6 to 0.79 strong. So anything below that 0.4 to 0.59 is moderate. And then anything below that, you probably shouldn't look at to, from a correlation standpoint. Of course, there's, there's exceptions, but you want to be looking to see these, these strong to very strong correlations. Okay. So... Got that out of the way, let's take a look at, and we'll get into the data studies it's at some of the BB divided by K strengths. Okay, so we're gonna go over these data studies and the first one, like I said before, the BB divided by K correlates with, with more granular stats. So this study that I'm gonna go over shows a strong correlation to outside the zone swing percentage and swinging strike percentage kind of combined. Our study resulted in a 0.69 R squared and a 0.83 R. So let me tell you how I did this study and I'll show you the graph real fast. Okay, so what I did is I took the last three years team BB divided by K. That's simply just their total walks versus their total strikeouts. You can see Cleveland had a 0.471 ratio, which is good. The league average is 0 0.40 or thereabouts 0.398. And uh, so what I did is I took that and then I took the swing outside the zone swinging strike percentage and the swinging strike percentage, and I scaled it to league average. So, and then they got you got a if you were over league average for outside the zone percentage and swinging strike rate, it was a negative number because like you know you're you're swinging at more balls than the the average team, or your your swinging strike rate goes up. So you can see the White Sox, the worst at minus 2.1, and that's a pretty good example because they happen to be the worst in BB to K. So you did BB to K, and this, this kind of fact, the way I factored, you know, more granular plate metrics, and it came, this is the, um, this is the chart, and I'll move this over here, and this is the chart, and you can see that it correlates really nicely, R squared of 0.69. So, that's just the study saying that, hey, why even take a look at some, and some of the, the, the granular metrics probably have a little bit more utility outside, but I, I don't, I mean, it's complicating things when you get this kind of correlation with more granular stats, that's one of the powers of this BB divided by K. So, okay, that one you understand now. Okay, so let's take a look at these run differential stats and Again, really good R squared and R numbers, like very strong. So I'll show you kind of how I did it for 2016 to 2018 and for 2019. Okay, so this is 2016. So you had a defensive BB to K and the lower the better for that. You had an offensive BB to K, the higher the better for that. So you're, if you get more walks and strikeouts, you're going to have a higher BB to K, obviously. And that's better for, in my opinion, offense, obviously. And uh, you can see how it correlates. So I give them a BBK plus minus. So what that was is like, okay, so the Indians, basically the 0.391 minus 0.28 plus 0.47 minus 3.98. So it's a plus minus. It's how, how much better the offensive number is and how much better the, from a suppression standpoint, the, the de defensive number is. So you get this BBK plus minus number, and then you can compare it to run differential. So you can see the good teams with run differentials, obviously Indians over the last three years, Dodgers, Red Sox, Astros, Yankees, makes sense. Okay, so how does this BBK plus minus relate to this run differential? And it's pretty amazing, actually. So here's the chart. And you can see the R squared is 0.7474. It's really a strong correlation. 
between plate discipline defined by BB divided by K and run differential. You can see the good teams are all up at the top. Uh, the Cubs actually kind of an outlier. They've, they've had pretty good uh, um, run differential, but not as good a plate, diff, uh, plate BB divided by K. So they kind of overperformed uh, over those three years. And then the teams that you can also use this for regression. I'll get into that in just a second. But I just wanted to show you the, the power that BB divided by K has to predicting run differential. Okay, guys, this one's really interesting. This can explain a better a better approach B, for defined by BB to K. BB divided by K can explain improvement. Um, and I'm gonna I'm gonna show you this this chart that I did that took a look at 2018 BB to K and way to runs created and then 2019 BB, BB divided by K and way to runs created. And you'll see that the top the top 10% of guys in improvement increased their way to runs created by 27 points. And the bottom 10, the, the guys who decreased their BB divided by K had a nine, 19 point decline. So I'll show you that real fast. Okay, so this was done as of games that concluded on 520. So you can see you got the player name, uh, La Stella, 2019 team, team angels you've got the walk divided by strikeout uh number in 2018 and the walk divided by strikeout number in 2019 so the change in that number from from 2018 or from from 2018 to 20 to 2019 and then the weighted runs created change is here so okay so you both years, 2018 to 2019. So if you take a look at the top 10% of this, and you go top 10% of guys who had positive changes in their BB divided by K. Oops, I did the wrong one. So here we go. This is top 10% BB to K change. Look at this way to run created change. Boom, 27. I, I actually slided him, it's 27.71. And so conversely, the guys in the bottom, the bottom 10% had a negative 19 change in weighted runs created. So um, highlighted by Manny Machado, 0.67 in 2018, 0.44 BB decayed in 2019. Weighted runs created went down 21 points. So that is a good stat. BBDK is kind of a good stat to see. Well, wait a second. This guy's why is his why has his production gone down? Well, there's a good chance that that you're going to have a reduced BB to K ratio. Okay, so let's get back into it. Okay, so this next one could identify team regression, and I probably need to put a little space in there. But oh well, that's why I didn't do it to begin with. Um, so anyway, the 2019 combined quarter chart has an R squared of 0.46 and an R 0.68. So, so good correlation, not as strong as some of the other stuff. But the hypothesis would be to use a previous quarter uh, run per game to BBK outliers, outliers as a betting tool. I did, the one thing I wanted to show you is kind of how these, these quarters, if you combine them all, so like in a, even a smaller time frame, so a quarter worth of baseball, 40 games, it does have powerful correlation. The other thing I'm going to show you that I don't have here is how the stats correlate year to year for batters and for pitchers. Okay, so this is kind of how it's laid out. You have your 18-1 BB to K, 18-2, and then your runs per game for team. And I'm going to work with Watson a little bit on some of this data because there, there could be some combinations that would be interesting, but that's, that's another video for another time. So what I did with this, as you can see, this RPG BB divided by K, I put all four quarters in and then charted this out, last five quarters combined, and you can see that's where you get your R, it's pretty good R squared. Okay, so finally I want to show you how the correlate year to year. So I did it for batters, 2017 BB divided by K, 2018 BB divided by K, and you put it into a regression chart, which is down here. And you can see this is uh, a 0.493 R squared or 0.70 R. That's year to year, a BB to K. Uh, and I think that was, I think I did, they had to have two, 250 at bats in each season. So for pitchers, it wasn't as quite, quite as powerful. 
Um, did 2017 and 2018, but it did have a 0.2973, so a 0.545R. So again, that's that falls into the moderate. So good core, really good correlation with the batters. The pitchers, moderate correlation. Uh, so I just wanted to just kind of show that. So let's go back into the final thing, and this probably is the most important thing. Okay, and for my final study, I'm going to take a look at two data studies I did. One was team data. One was starting pitching pitching data uh, from 2016 to 2018. So juice ball, don't worry about it. We can still use BV divided by K. It still has utility in betting. I'm going to show you how I did those studies or what I did and show you the results that I found. Okay, so this is a chart for every starting pitcher for every game from 2016 to 2018. So you can see... If you wanted to bet on every pitcher in every game, then you would be down. If you bet on the pitcher, you'd be down 34,763. If you bet against the pitcher, you'd be down 34,763. Either way, you lose. So what I wanted to do is see, well, what happens about, what if we look at the top 10% of pitchers in BB divided by K? So, and, and so by top, I mean the best pitcher. So we'll, we're going to do it by lowest BB to K, because that means you're not walking guys, you're striking out guys. So we go to, let's go to bottom 10%. And if you just blanket bet bottom 10% of pitchers, you can see you'd be up $5,739. You'd be, the win loss is 995 and 657. So that's, and just if you just blanket bet these guys in the top 10%, that's what, that's the result. So I think that's pretty, pretty cool. And if you look at the the top 10%, so this is, by top 10, this is like the worst. So the worst in BB divided by K. They, they, they walk comparatively more guys and strike out less guys. Okay, so let's see it. Okay, so if you bet against these guys, you would have won $3,118 betting against these guys. Their win loss is 68 and 119. And guys like... Henry Owens, Brett Oberholzer, do you remember him? Brian Mattis, he didn't last long. And uh, Kyle Kendrick, and the Yankee Clipper got a start. Tyler Clipper, guys like that. So pretty simple betting strategy with, with pretty significant ramifications. So let's take a look at the team one. Okay, so I showed you this earlier, the BBK plus minus. This takes away, this takes account how much you're, the, the lower BB to K defensively, the better. The higher BB to K offensively, the better. And let's take a look at the top five teams here. So we will take number filters. We will go top five items. Okay, so if you're going to blanket bet teams, you would similar to the starting pitchers, and I don't know, there's it's off by about 100 bucks, but this still, I just took it from Sports Database. So you, if you blanket bet every team... In every game, you'd be down 34000 roughly. Okay, so let's see top five teams in BB to K. Let's say, see how they've fared versus the money line. And plus minus. So this is good defense and low defense and high offense, top five items. So you can see blanket betting on them. You'd be ahead of the game, which is hard to find. You'd be ahead about 13 units, just blanking bet the Indians, Dodgers, Red Sox, Astros, and Yankees. Okay, so how about the worst teams? Oh, look, you'd be, a, you'd be ahead of the game just betting against these teams with poor plate discipline defined by BBK plus minus. I think more importantly, you have utility on the, on the money line, but the way that they correlate Back to the granular stats, two runs per game, two money line, and it's a really simple stat. Of course, there's more to it than, than the high-level stuff, and I'll be getting into that in Base Winter Crunch, and you'll, you'll be able to see kind of how I'm using this stat. We're going to be heavily dosing our sauce with some BB Decay here, and I think it's going to be, you know, based on what I've looked at, I think it's going to be really profitable for it. Look forward to the rest of the baseball season. It's, it's, it's exciting times, and I, I think that uh, uh, armed with, with this knowledge is, is going, to, going to be very helpful for us. Thanks again, guys. Thanks for listening.